Hey, what's up guys? I am Joe from Workbench, and this week we're gonna talk about isometric projection. All right, so this is an isometric projection. It's called that kind of like an isosceles triangle because each plane basically has the same scaling and they're infinitely perpendicular to each other. They don't go back in perspective. So let's go about the process of making this. There are two ways to do it. One is with an isometric camera. After Effects doesn't really have an actual isometric camera, so we have to make our own. And the second way is with something called SSR, and that stands for scale, shear or skew, and rotate. So first let's take a look at how we actually set up a 3D camera for that. I started off by putting a null into the center of the comp, and to that I parented the camera, and I set its position back to negative 500,000 pixels, so we're really far away. That's gonna get rid of any perspective the camera had. We're basically turning it into a, like a super telephoto camera. And then we're gonna set our zoom and focus distance to the opposite of that, which is 500,000 pixels. And that's all our settings for the camera. And then in the isometric null here, we have a rotation. So if we open up the Wikipedia article on that, which is where this comes from, we see that we need to rotate 45 degrees, and then we have to rotate up 35.264 degrees. So I've done that here in the null. We have our X rotation at 45 degrees, and then our Y rotation is 35.264 degrees. But you'll also notice here that I have a Z rotation of 30 degrees. I figured that out through experimenting at some point a long time ago, because otherwise you get this, which is not exactly what we're looking for. So let's undo that. And that's how you set that up. Anything that's putting into this comp that's 3D will rotate into this position. If you want this to fit the other direction, you just rotate your Z 90 degrees. You can also rotate on X if you want it to be a vertical projection. And you can rotate Y if you want to flip it the other direction as well. So this one's pretty easy to modify just by thinking about it. Then you have the SSR method. And if you notice here, we have this thing scaled a little differently. The short side on this one is the X, but in most of these other ones, we want to scale the Y down. So if we set this to 100, you notice that this is actually scaled 86.602%. And that's needed because skew stretches this out a little bit. So we use that to bring it back. You'll also notice that if we go back and set this to 100, the opposite of that is also 115.4708. You can get by with 115.5 or 86.6 if you want, but these are a little more exacting numbers. So how do we achieve this skew? Well, in the transform effect, there's actually a setting for skew. So we need to skew it by 30 degrees, and then we need to rotate this thing negative 60. We can't rotate in the actual layer control because the skew operation has to happen first. Also, they can't happen concurrently, so we can't do rotation in the original transform effect. We have to do that in a separate one. Since we want scale to really happen first, we can do that right on the layer itself. So those numbers are pretty specific, and they actually come from this article right here. There's a bunch of places that talk about how to do it, but this one's pretty good. I'll link this in the description below so you guys can check it out. It has a lot more explanations of why we have to do some of these things. And after that, I have an angle control and distance control. And that's set up like our angular controls from tutorial 87. I'll link that below as well. That's going to let us slide various elements around this plane as we want. Because of how this one is built, however, this angle control is only set to 180. So we don't exactly need it on this model. All right, so you notice I have distance keyframed. And that's because if we bring this up, you can see I'm just showing you that it matches exactly. If we change this to difference, you can see, put that over the element. It's hard to get it exactly on top of it, but that's pretty damn close. So I'm gonna undo that. So it's kind of up to you which version you use. For the rest of this, we're gonna use the SSR method. All right, so let's check this out. Here we've built a rectangular prism out of it, and we're gonna use a couple of cool shortcuts that After Effects can use. So the first one we're gonna take a look at is right. I'm gonna hit UU to open that up. And you'll notice the first thing I have here is this expression of this position. So I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna open up Expressionist. Move that over here. We're gonna bring this in. All of these are set up with the same expression on this position. Note that it's the position of the rectangle, not of the layer itself. So we're gonna set up X and Y to be equal to the size of this rectangle. So here we're grabbing the X value, putting it into X, the Y value, and putting it into Y. Then we're gonna take X and set that equal to X divided by two, which moves the anchor point from the center to this edge. And then we're gonna do y equals y divided by negative two. If that was positive, it would go from the top, but we want it to be at the bottom. So that takes our anchor point from the middle and puts it down here in this corner. So that lets every one of these grow from this corner. All right, so let's close this up. Then down here in the transform for that rectangle, we're basically doing the same thing as the other one. We're gonna skew it by 30. And here we have negative 30 in our rotation. So as long as these are opposite, you're gonna get one of these vertical versions. We could go do in the left the same way and have a different expression on the position and everything to move that anchor point the other direction, but there's no point in doing that. Scale at negative 100 in the X and call it a day. So that's basically set the same way. 
the shadow is the same thing as this left. It's just rotated 120 degrees. So we flip it this way. All right, and then the top is the only one that is a little different. If we open that one up, it has the same expression, but down here, you can see we have negative 30, negative 30. So when skew and rotation are the same, you get a plane parallel to our base grid. This can also be 30, 30, but obviously that doesn't let me keep this in the bottom corner. It puts it to the other corner and I don't want it there. That's it for the setup of this. And if you click on this actual size thing, you see that we need to scale these things in like we did before. All of these are already scaled. If we hit UU on this, you can see that this time it's like I told you, we're gonna scale that 86.6% on the Y value. If I turn this off and make this 100, you can get an idea of what that looks like even though these are the same values what the skew does to it. So we do that to correct for the skew. And that's it for that setup. So then I went a little bit further and I set up a controller to control all the size of this box. The controller's a null in the corner. I don't know why this thing turns itself off on the time, but there we go. So everything is parented to this controller at this corner. So the only thing different about this is that all the sizes of these rectangles are determined by these sliders in this controller layer. You can see I have this guide here for width, height, and depth. It's gonna stand for X, Y, and Z for depth. And so for all of these, I have that set up in the expression on the size. Let's open one of these up in Expressionist. So all of these are gonna pick the controller that they're gonna need. So on this right side, we're gonna expand in Z and Y. So we're gonna grab those two controllers and then set the size to be Z comma Y. In the left one, we'll pull that one in. We're gonna expand in X and Y. And so we do the same thing and we end up with X and Y. The shadow is the same thing as the left, just rotated. So we did the same thing there. The one thing we did in this one that we didn't do in the other one is that we actually set this to be a gradient. What's great is that this shadow is always gonna lie in this plane, so your gradient can always just go directly this way. Makes it look a lot more real that way. If we turn this off, you can kind of get an idea. All right, so our top is set up a little bit differently than the others. We have size set the same way. This one's gonna go back in Z and in X. So we have Z comma X, but we also have Y on this one because it needs to figure out where the hell it goes at the top. So in here, we have an expression on position. Bring that up. You can see we grab in Y, and this is transformed by position, but it could just be position, minus a point, and the point is gonna be zero because we don't wanna change anything, X, comma, Y. So we're gonna subtract the Y distance, which is gonna put this at the top, but because we're dealing with like fractional stuff here, these aren't gonna match exactly. So in order to make sure that we have no gaps, we're gonna subtract another 0.4. Since here we're basically subtracting a negative number, we're gonna add 0.4, so that's gonna push this down just a little bit. It's enough that we don't get any corners on the edges and we fill these seams in. So it looks like that. All right, so that's pretty much it. Now you can take this controller and change things around as you see fit. It's actually a pretty fun thing to play around with. I've always loved working with isometric projections. I did like an architecture class like some summer between like fifth and sixth grade or something like that. So I kind of fell in love with it. Plus it has that top-down video game vibe. Or even like MC Escher, whose work I've always loved. I'm sure you've probably seen an isometric tutorial somewhere but I like to think I simplified it a little bit and give you a little bit more control, at least with cubic objects. So I hope you guys take this and have some fun with it. If you come up with anything interesting, tweet it to me. All right, if you have any comments or questions, leave them in the comments down below. If you'd like to help support what we do, check out patreon.com slash workbench. Make sure you keep up with the blog at workbench.tv. And as always, I am Joe, and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Hey, what's up, guys? I am 